I'm Nelly Menjum and I'm on a mission to experience the biggest derbies in European club football. These are the games that are worth more than three points. These are the games that divide a city. These are derby days. Last time out you saw me in Spain, where I was discovering a rivalry that was between two sides from the political spectrum. They were hundreds of miles apart and they didn't even consider themselves from the same country. Now I'm here in Milan for a derby between two teams who are only really separated by the length of a pitch. People that uh, stay all the week together tonight uh, are enemy just for 90 minutes, you know. Milan is the best of the best of In the Milan. I mean, they're, they're good guys, but they're definitely rubbish. This is our derby. This is how our derby is. Now, known here as the Derby della Madonnina, the Milanese derby takes its name from the Virgin Mary that sits upon the iconic Duomo here in central Milan. Not only do these two teams share the same city and same stadium, once they were actually one and the same club. According to most reports, this is actually where it all began, here in central Milan on Via Becchette, where over 100 years ago, Herbert Kilpin, the son of a Nottingham butcher, along with 12 other associates from Italy and England, established the Milan Football and Cricket Club, now today known as AC Milan. The ships of, with English were arriving, they were playing in the docks, the, um, uh, the, dock people, the docks people were, were staring at them playing the sport, so they were bringing that. Then slowly came, you can imagine, some few years to go from Genoa to go up uh, these uh, 300 kilometers to so Milan and uh, making the way and then start the Milan history. But the tale of the Milanese derby is the tale of separation and it was here, not far from and not long after the Milan club was established, that a splinter group of Milan fans led by Giorgio Muggiani established Inter Milan. Inter uh, started on the 9th of uh, March uh, 1908. By uh, They founded the club then when a group who were, uh, who were also in AC Milan they decided to leave AC Milan because they had a friend who was uh, Swiss and he wasn't allowed to play in AC Milan and they were they were very well educated artsy kind of intellectual people so they decided they went to a restaurant called Ristorante Orologio and they pretty much set out the rules for how how they're going to create their club and why it's called Inter and they finished with the words that we call the club Internazionale because we are brothers in the world. Milan fans can always say to Inter, ah, we were before you and you came after us. But Inter fans, when they were hearing this, they could reply then, we really came out from nothing then. So there is always <laughs> this big rivalry, this is the way how they come out. The, the difference between the two clubs, I would say, between Milan and Inter, you can actually see in the owners, Angelo Moratti, the father of Massimo Moratti, and Massimo Moratti himself, and Silvio Berlusconi. Silvio Berlusconi is, is a, he likes everything to be, you know, superstar Hollywood, big, flamboyant. flamboyant. Whereas with Inter, it's hard work, it's down to earth. I mean, if you go to the, do the San Siro tour and compare the two dressing rooms, you know, Milan, they have leather chairs. Every single player has their own leather chair. Inter's dressing room, everyone is at the same level, bent benches just to hang their clothes. It's nothing special or spectacular at all. Milan uh, has always been about like an international club. Uh, they are always focused on winning uh, the Champions League. Uh, for them, uh, for us, it's always like, uh, it's more important than anything else. Uh. Sure. The rivalry between Inter and Milan they always, I mean, it's always known as kind of like a rivalry between cousins. Because in a family of four, you could have uh, two people who are Interisti and two people who are Milanisti. Just to explain to you, when Nesta came here, you know Nesta played for uh, Lazio, was the captain of Lazio, and after that he came to Milan and was surprised because he understood that it's very, it's, it's possible, it's very common for the, for the players of uh, Inter and Milan to go in, in the same restaurant, to attend the same parties, and to live in the same building. Like in Rome for years, 
the, the only meaning of the season was to win the Derby. Mm. In Milan it's really important as well, but you're looking for, uh, for the big target to win the title. Years ago, the Derby is something different. Derby um, means something for, for, for a European title or for an Italian title. So, of course, the passion and also the pressure is different. Now it's not the same. In the late 80s, it was normal that people would get stabbed or maybe even killed when there were fights. So, one, one time it happened that one of the supporters died. So, the two leaders met up. They decided to have a, uh, they have a peace pact. If families want to go to the derby, they could do it in calm and without the threat of ending up in a fight that they don't have nothing to do with. Instead, they take the fight to the stadium with banners, with TIFOs, choreographies. They mock each other and everything is allowed because if you don't fight, if blood isn't spilled, you can imagine what happens inside there with banners. Everything is allowed. It's, it's a part of the TIFO. Look, it's a part of the Ultras culture that, you know, defending your team, defending your banners, defending your flags is, 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 is a question of honor. You have to, you have to defend it. The, the big fear for this derby was that uh, the, the two curva were supposed to be closed. Close, well, yeah. Inter uh, was supposed to be closed, and there, there is a big uh, rivalry. But uh, the, the ultras in Italy are, are really together. So the Milan side said, "If you are not going to the stadium, we are not going either." There are certain things that they have to stand behind each other, and if you don't. You, 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 you're, you're, you show no honor, you're not a man, you're, you know, you... you, you, you For example. You, exactly, you, you, you've, you've dishonored the way of life because for them it's a way of life. Now the, the, the judge just reopened the Inter Curva and so it's going to be the real derby. You're going to see something that you can't see anywhere else in the world, which you can't see in any other city in the world and which you won't experience in any other fixture than this fixture. Just walking towards the San Siro in an evening match when you just see the lights of San Siro, when, when you turn the corner, that just fills you up with a sensation. I, I can't describe it. It would be, it would be the, how do you describe to someone for the first time how it feels to become a father, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't. You, have to, you have to live it. You have to live it. You have to live it. And also with the choreographies, the singing, the sound, the banners, the flares, all of this, and the players and the passion, you really, it, it literally, 80,000 people, uh, I just, I can't explain it, you have to see it. It's cold, it's grey, it's damp, it's a typical Milan December morning, but I'm no less excited for what is the match on everyone's lips. The Milanese derby, you know, it's funny, all week we've had a few people saying that perhaps because of both teams' fortunes and the fact they're both not vying for the title in this game, this derby might not be as intense as always, but all you have to do is open the paper and it's all the Milanese derby, you know, you've got everything from Mazzari and Allegri's comments to the lineups. We've seen the hype in the papers, but now I want to see it on the streets of Milan. From the Duomo to the San Siro, Milan's about to be taken over by football. Yeah, we're at the San Siro, kickoffs in an hour, and I tell you what, it's ringing true. This really seems to be the derby of the Cousins because whilst there's a bit of a bit of tension, it's really quite jovial. You've got Inter and AC walking amongst each other, they're drinking together. I, I, I want to get a sense of just what this derby is all about, so I'm going to head in and speak to some people. <laughs> Now guys, guys, let me just get this straight. We're, we're, we're Swedish, we're all come from Sweden. We're Sweden, straight from Sweden. And what is it about Inter? Why Inter of, 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 all, of all teams? Of all... Everybody knows it's only one team with the heart and it's international. Milan is the best team in the world. And Inter? Inter is shit. shit. There's no fucking comparison. And these are ridiculous. And every time we go to Derby, these guys, they, they, they just try to sing, but there is no fucking way. All the stadium is red, black, red, black, red, black, and everybody's seeing it. It's like going to paradise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're in heaven when you're out Meazza. It's beautiful. You, you can hear it, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's another world inside. Another world. It's, you know, it's a city split in two parts. Yeah, it's uh, like uh, Christmas Day. Milan is the best of the 
from speaking to the people of Milan, from both the black and blue and red and black side, you really get a sense of the history and the meaning of the derby to this city. But now it's my time to experience it for myself. I hear that tonight it might be a little different due to off-field issues. But today the police made a raid against the, against the TIFO, confiscated one of the banners. When the Corva Nord heard about this, they made it very clear from the beginning that if the Milanisti aren't having any choreography, we aren't either. Because in the end and in the beginning of this game, what it is about is to win the fight on the terraces. But regardless, it's a derby, it's Milan, it's football. You know it's going to be unique. I got my ticket, let's go in, check it out. And so full time comes and it's 1-0 to Inter with a cheeky goal in the box for Palacio in the 86th minute. To be honest, Milan were the better side, but there was a much bigger story out of this. The Inter Milan fans showing that solidarity with the AC for a far greater cause than getting one up on your rivals showed that football without fans is nothing. And that this, the Milanese derby, is all about the people in those terraces. They held off until the 86 when they scored, but the message was already there. This derby is unique. Whilst they're on the opposite sides of each other, they're still brothers as fans. What a beautiful game. What a beautiful unity. What a beautiful rivalry. Davi de la Marinina. Beautiful. That's it for Derby Day 2, but there's still six more to go in this epic series and the derbies are only getting bigger, they're only getting better. So if you want to follow us, subscribe to Copa 90 or hit me up on Twitter, Ellie for Copa 90. We're going around Europe following the biggest derbies and the most passionate fans in the world. See you there.